Good morning and welcome to a really, really wet day. Um, so we stayed at Alawithon Harbour last night. Um, the Alawithon Harbour was fantastic. Such a peaceful sleep. Um, all you heard was the, the seabirds. We had a nice little pot out with the dogs. Um, that was really nice. Then we came back and we were both physically knackered, so we had quite an early night last night. I think we were actually in bed by about 7 o'clock. <laughs> and those all, toilets then? Yeah, all nicely tucked up, all cosy and stuff. Um, the dogs slept for about 13 hours, <laughs> so that was good. Um, so about that cow park, it actually has one single, it's like a border cabin, where it has one single toilet in there. It's it's a big, it's probably about 8 foot square, it has a toilet and sink. There was toilet paper. Although it was old, it was absolutely spotless yeah. and clean. So that was really good, so we managed to use that. Right next to that, you can also dump all your waste water as well. And there's a separate tap for drinking water. So we managed to fill up our drinking water and dump all of our waste water, which was really good before we left. Um, there's a few bins there as well, so you can get rid of your, your bags of rubbish. Um, and it was free. Yeah, and all of that was free. You can't park in the picnic area part of it. So if you park in the harbour, that's fine. But if you go further up where the grassy area is, that's the picnic area. And there's no overnight parking in there. But that's not flat anyway. Yeah, it's not flat. It's not so flat. where we parked was absolutely perfect. Yeah. So I'll leave details of that in, uh, either in the video or in the description. So today, yards, then the roundabout, take the second exit onto Main Street, A747. So today the plan is we're just going to head up the coast, um, up to Stranra and then up to Air. Um, just see where it takes us. Obviously it is absolutely tipping down with rain at the moment, but we're just following the road and just see where we get. So we'll catch up with you again in a little while. This is the beach just outside of Stranra. Um, we've had the dogs out just for a bit, wander about on the beach. Let Bracken off his lead and have a bit run around. Um, all the dogs are soaking wet, we've just put them back inside for now. Uh, we've dried them off and put them back in the van. Alison's just collecting a few, a few bits of shells and I don't know, whatever else she wants for her, her paintings and stuff for inspiration. Um, and then the good thing is, a little bit further down here, there's a little snack bar, so we're going to grab a coffee as well before we before we head off a bit further along the road. It's amazing that all the beaches has, have different shells. Um, so that really nice beer that we went on first time had loads of the um, like the cockles, um, but they were all like a very white colour. This beach has a lot of the same, the cockles, but they're very orangey in colour. Um, it's completely different but there's a lot of on this beach as well there's a lot of um, oyster shells and the razor clams so just completely different there's a few limpet shells on here but it's mainly the cockles oysters and razor clams that's on here um, I think Stranra we've just drove through Stranra uh, which is quite a nice town Obviously it's just chucking it down rain at the minute, so it's a bit miserable walking about just around the town for no reason. Um, so we're literally just driving up and seeing the coast and it's, you know, it's really rugged as you're heading further around and stuff. I mean, obviously this is a really quiet beer. Obviously you've got the, terry, uh, the ferry terminal, which I think takes you across the island. Um, we've passed a number of holiday parks and we've passed quite a few park-ups. Um, it's literally just had the signs in saying that um, 
you can park here. <laughs> yeah, you can see how, uh, what the weather's like at the moment. Got the old poncho on, trying to keep dry. Um, yeah, so the park ups that we've passed have just had like little footprint signs, saying literally, yeah, you can park here, but leave only footprints, which is really good. And if everyone's abiding by that, then that's fantastic. Uh, so yeah, we'll just uh, potter along this beach a little bit, uh, the best we can, and then get a cup of coffee and back in the van and head further up the coast. Okay, catch you in a bit. So back in the van at the moment. Went along to the little snack bar and went in originally for a cup of coffee, but we ended up coming out with a beautiful lentil soup and buttered bun. And it's absolutely tasty as. Awesome. What? Just saying Alison as well, it came with these wooden spoons that aren't very spoon-like, reckon, off. Aren't very spoon-like. They're just flat, but obviously spoon shape. But they didn't half work. And this soup is absolutely red hot. Nice. So for this parking pier that we're actually in at the moment, there's no overnight parking in here. Uh, so it is just daytime. And that snack bar is open 8 till 2. Do tons of sandwiches and stuff like that. So yeah, definitely worth popping. But highly recommend the lentil soup. Mm, tremendous. The weather's not getting any better outside at the moment. It's still really bleak and grey, but uh, yeah, we're just going to finish this soup and then crack on, so we'll see you in a bit. Enjoying it so far? Or what? Loving it. Loving good, it. Good, good. And all them driving up the rugged coastline has been absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. So, glad you're enjoying it. I was hurt quite a bit the other day. Well, every day. Yeah. But um, after last night's sleep, I did think about going home because my five myalgia was absolutely killing me. But I wouldn't change it for the world, and it's done me mental health and world of food. Good, so stuck with it. Like I say, we'll just carry on, just yeah. exploring. Yeah. Um, and you had trouble <coughs> yesterday, didn't you? Uh, I, was, I had major cramps yesterday. Um, During the night. Obviously, I have the leukemia, and the drugs that I take for the leukemia, one of the side effects of it is that I can't move my legs. I have the leukemia, and the drugs that I take for the leukemia, one of the side effects of that is major cramps. Um, and just recently, over the last week or so, the doctor has now stopped, for some stupid reason, the um, quinine. quinine tablets that I was taking for dealt with the cramps. But obviously, I'll make an appointment with the doctor when we get home and explain that I need to be stealing these quinine tablets. So, anyway, it's enough of our health problems. Tell us all about yours. Yeah. Leave, us some, leave us some comments if you're travelling with health conditions and the kind of uh, problems that you might face, uh, anything that you come across, yeah. uh, any tips or tricks. Or questions for us. Yeah. yeah. Ah, even questions for us. There you go. Yeah. Two old kids taking <laughs> questions. Um, mind you, we've been looking at our YouTube audience and it looks like a lot of you old kids is there, so... <laughs> <laughs> if you all kids want to leave us or get a couple of questions or even advice, tips, tricks, go for it. Welcome yeah. all the comments. Um, Be interesting. Yeah. And if you've obviously stuck out to our video this far, then thank you very much. I really appreciate your support. Yeah, give us a bit of a, a thumbs up, like, subscribe, uh, and we'll carry on with the rest of the day and see where that gets us.
but that's a bit better. Found uh, another bit beach um, just on the way up to air. Um, you can stop over here on the night as well. There's no restrictions or anything. I'll give you a quick whiz round in a second. Um, I've managed to have a nice freshen up. Alison's been on the beach collecting more bits and pieces, shells and what have you. So while she was out doing that, I've had a nice, uh, nice hot wash. Bit of deodorant on and a change of uh, change of top or a change of scenery, shall we say? Anyway, where we're actually at at the moment is directly opposite Elsa Craig. Um, Elsa Craig's small island used to be used for the granite for the curling stones in the Olympics and stuff. So the park up itself, it's a it's quite a nice beach, it's sort of like black sand beach, um, bit of shingle and shale. Plenty of sea life on the rocks just out there. I'd say some cormorants, uh, and there's another few bits and pieces. Uh, the park up itself, there is a, a large bin, and it's set back from the road. It's probably about 50 metres to the road, but it is set back a little bit. Um, you've got a bit of an embankment and a tray line to separate you off. And then obviously there's a village a bit further along the road. You do get heavy traffic going past, but it's all speed restricted to 40 mile an hour for anything over seven and a half ton. So yeah, this might be a possible spot. We're gonna pop in the air and have a look around there and then potentially come back. Lost. Uh oh. <laughs> we couldn't find the coast. We found it it's now. Been there for ages and all. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not worry. So just. This is our park up for the night. Uh, it's our beach. Uh, it was on park for night. I'll leave the details and description. Um, but we're parked there. There's just a couple of cars at the moment. It's in. Um, dog walkers on the beach. Nice big flat open beach. So the dogs had a bit run about. We've just put them back in the van. And uh, we're just having a quick wander along, see what that building is there. But it's a big open car park. Um, on park for night, I don't think there's any issues or anything with it. So yeah, we're just gonna stop here for the night. So we've got our park up. Um, we're actually in Presswick Bay, I think it is. Cause we actually have Presswick Airport, literally five minutes along the road and we've got planes coming in about every two minutes. <laughs> Although, to be honest, where we're parked in here, we can't actually hear them. Uh, we've got the windows open at the minute while we're cooking, so we can sort of hear them a little bit, but I think once the windows is closed, it's going to be really quiet in there. Um, so, tonight I'm doing um, pesto chicken with penne pasta. Just going to wing it. We'll see what happens. I've only got one pan. Um, so I'm going to cook off the pasta first, once the pasta's done just chuck that into a bowl um, and then once I get all the other ingredients cooked up then chuck the pasta back in with it and get it all warmed back through. So we'll see where we'll get on with that. So water's just starting to bubble now so I've got a couple of handfuls of pasta in there. Obviously there's just the two of us so that should work quite well for that um, and then I'll get the chicken chopped and I think I'll just put that into another bowl and we'll see how we get on. So just while the 
pasta's been cooking. I've just been prepping a little bit. So I just chopped some uh, chicken into strips. Chopped the garlic nice and fine. Chopped some cherry tomatoes uh, in half. Got the pesto ready, got the double cream ready, got the salt and pepper ready. Should be good to go. Right, so I managed to get all the pasta drained safely. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just add that into the bowl out the way for a minute. <clears throat> that back on there. Sesame oil in. Garlic. Give that a quick stir around. And the chicken. I think we need a bit more oil into that and the lid on to just help this cook through better. So it's got the chicken cooking away nice in there. We've got the penne pasta ready to go. We've got chopped tomatoes ready to go. We've got double cream ready to go and a little bit of salt and pepper ready to go oh, and the green pesto so chicken was looking quite nice now that's looking nice so into the chicken now going to add <laughs> double cream pesto and then just mix all of that through also need parmesan cheese into that tell you what wish we had smelly vision so you can smell how good this is Definitely you could do with a bigger pan. Tomatoes in. Beautiful. Lid back on. And we'll just give that a minute or so. It looks really nice. It smells nice. It does, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Those went. <laughs> when? <laughs> no, I'm going to go and win. Well, tell you what, that looks nice. Finish off with fresh parmesan. Thank you, sir. And on the pine, more black pepper. There you go. Ta-da! Dive in, pet. Let us know what you think. Right. So let's give this a go. Oh. That's nice. Really no. Get down, you've got kibble. Well, as to be said again, proofs in the tasting, and again, them plates don't lie. Do you reckon, Alison? Beautiful. Lovely. Was tasty, wasn't it? Yeah. You can make that in the house. The only problem we've got now is we've got all of this washing up to do. Who's doing it? I'll do it, pet. Don't worry. Oh, that's alright. Because I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> right, anyway, I think that's going to do us for tonight. Um, you're going to get this washing up done, get cleaned up, 
get them out for another quick wander uh, so they can do the business. And then I think we're going to have another early night. Yeah. Uh, the problem with obviously having um, like our wealth conditions that we have, it really takes it out of us when we're trying to walk anywhere and do things. So at this time of night, we are literally broken and ready to just lie down. It's a different kind of tiredness. It's not yeah, it's a fatigue, fatigue. where it's you just yeah. need to just lie down. So hopefully, get cleaned up. Excuse me, that was some mail. <laughs> um, get cleaned up next half an hour or so. Then we're just gonna settle down for the night. I think. Yeah, we'll so, them. Yeah, so we'll catch you again in the morning where we've got another plan for tomorrow so stick with us right morning everybody <laughs> i thought you had your tip <laughs> right, morning everybody um right so this park up where we were last night um really good park up um i will say that we parked up here on a monday night it might be different on a weekend but it is just a big um car park basically um, I'm just going to spin you around now, try and speak a little bit as I just turn around. Um, we found an island this morning. Yeah, hang on, two seconds, Pip. Didn't it be jumping the gun? <laughs> so, literally all this is, is just a big expanse of car park. We took ourselves away in the bottom corner. That big red building that you see at the top is one of these fun shack things for the kids. Um, so, yeah, pretty, yeah, that's all there is, fun shack. We were in the corner. Um, it was really quiet. As I say, we were here on a Monday night. I don't know whether the car park might be different during like a weekend with kids boy races that sort of thing I don't know but um, we didn't have any problem at all it was a really quiet night which was really good um, and now that the clouds has actually broken a little bit from yesterday I don't know if you can see across there um, we've actually got the Isle of Arran in the distance there as well um, the tide has gone right out I can't believe how far in the tide was yesterday when we got here yeah. Uh, but the tide's right out at the moment so i didn't actually have a very good night last night although it was really peaceful and quiet i was in a lot of pain last night just with me conditions and aches pains um cramps so i suffered quite a bit last night um it was our original plan to go to the we were going to head home today anyway and the original plan was just to head straight home from here. But we've decided that uh, last night I wanted to take in the Kelpies. It's something I've wanted to see for a long time. I've drove past them many times, but I wanted to get up uh, close to them. And that was our plan last night. And then this morning I got up and because of the night I had last night, I was like, no, we're not going to bother. But now that we've got everything packed away and starting to calm down again, <laughs> We're going to go and see the Kelpies. So, we'll catch you on the road a little bit later and we'll get to the Kelpies as well, hopefully. See you in a bit. Right, so, um, like I said, this morning we decided that we're going to go to the Kelpies. Uh, I think we're about, looking at sat nav most about 15 minutes away from them. Um, so the, the park up that we were on last night, it's about an hour and a half from there to the Kelpies. It was a case of we either drive three and a half hours home from the park up or we go to the Kelpies an hour and a half and then three and a half hours on. So we just thought, yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll go to the Kelpies and we'll have a look at them. We've just stopped off at the Falkirk Wheel. Which is a bit of in there, you can see it there. If nobody knows what that is, it's for boats coming down the canal to get up to the next level. 
So obviously this wasn't part of our plan, but uh, since the roads actually brought us into the Falkirk Whale first, we may as well just have a quick stop and have a quick glance at that. So just taking one of the canals. Train line just underneath there as well. So the canal boards come along, they go through there, onto the bottom part, fills with water, the wheel turns it and it goes up to the very top bit and then they carry on on the other canal. Right, the, the Victorians did it right, I think. So whoever invented this was a waste of time, is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, it's just a modern way, but is it fire ducks? They, yeah. they looked prettier. Well, there were locks, weren't there? Canal locks. That's what used to drop them from height to height. Well, yeah, still, it still do. does, the, doesn't it? The, yeah, they still do when they go in and they fill with water and they get out on a yeah, different level. Yeah, canal locks, yeah. I think. Yeah, but that was a lot of hard work, actually, wasn't it? If you're living on the river. Yeah, so we're just going to head back to the car. Yeah. Um, Pan, Camba, wherever. And then we'll just carry on to up to the Kelpies. Can I just and get the dogs out. I have seen photographs to prove Andrew is missing a few brain cells right now. <laughs> oh, that's why. Yeah. Dogs. So we got out to see the Falkirk Whale and while we were out there, I lost a pair of glasses. So I don't know if you can see me nice and clear now. My new shiny ones on. So obviously I haven't eyes like an old mole. Um, I've had to pull in Tesco's and I've just managed to get some uh, very small, well, plus ones, ready readers out of Tesco's, which is ideal for driving. I've still got my reading glasses, but just for that little bit of distance, the, although these are actually ready readers, the plus ones work a treat. So, right, onwards and upwards, or for air, uh, say the Kelpies. Oh, we're off to see the Kelpies. Yes. Well, are you just my glasses? Yeah, just your glasses. Oh, have you found me glasses? Oh my god. You didn't take your phone, so I couldn't text you. <laughs> they were actually down by the handbrake that Andrew had previously checked. So I thought I'd lost my glasses. I hadn't lost my glasses. Nope. Alison couldn't let us know because I took my phone with us to here. <laughs> So she couldn't tell us, and she's found them while I'm in. Tesco's. Tesco's. Never mind. So now I've got a spare, spare, spare pair of glasses. <laughs> oh believe, it, believe it or not, these ones are actually quite good. I told you that. Your eyes are changing. Yeah. So not a worry. Not a worry. Finally made it to the Kelpies. Is that one enjoying that? Further on. Mission. So just on our way around, we've just had the, the dogs out the van. Let them have a bit uh, run on the field just outside here, which is good. Um, so dogs have just been up on that bit there. And they're now just in the van there. 
So, so I say we've turned up, now it's Tuesday. Um, it's quite quiet. And currently, there's free parking in the, in the car park. Um, I don't know whether that's just seasonal, they start charging at a late date. Obviously, there's toilets in that car park. Um, yeah, there is overnight stairs in one of the car parks, I think it's £10 a night. We saw on the sign. Yeah. So we're now at the Kelpies. Um, there's a load of horses here at the minute and uh, quite a few people. I'm not sure if there's some kind of show, horse show thing going on. Not sure. Yeah. So we're currently just outside of the the coffee shop, gift shop that's there. It's two smaller Kelpies here as well. So I wonder around there. I've actually got four Kelpies. <laughs> There's them. So we've actually just been in the coffee shop and I uh, grabbed a quick coffee. <laughs> Shh. Shh. I'm recording. I am recording. Yes, I might have grabbed a little bit of Tiffin. It was only a small piece. <laughs> so anyway, we're just wandering up to these, the horses. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, they're impressive from the side of the road, but as you get closer, just the sheer size of them is incredible. Oh, no. Apparently it's supposed to be incredible on a night because they're all lit, different colours on the night. And there's a bit of the, there's water underneath them and you get the lovely reflection in the water. So let's head up that way a little bit, see if we can get some reflection as well. Going to put the drone up now. There's signs up saying you can use your drone. Um, obviously, there's different restrictions for different size drones. Mine's 249 grams. I'll be fine flying up where I am. I'm just going to chuck it straight over about 50 meters, so I'm well out of the way of everybody, uh, and just get a couple of shots through there. That's us at the Kelpies. Yep. 
absolutely incredible when you're right up against them. Um, managed to get the drone up and got some lovely shots with the drone, so I'll cut them into the edit. Um, but yeah, really good. So we're now just going to head back to the car. I think we'll walk along that canal path then, you can see the things. So yeah, there's a little canal right next to the Kelpie, so we're just going to have a wander down that canal path if we can. And then, um, yeah, we'll catch you when we get back to the car, I think. So we're just about home now, um, literally about 5-10 minutes away, so hope you've enjoyed being with us on our Scottish trip, adventure. yeah I was going to say a Scottish adventure, did sort of start off as the South West Coast 300 but we've done a lot more miles than that, we didn't stick with the normal South West Coast 300 itinerary simply because we we're not able to be wandering around towns and villages and things like that. So we wanted to literally just hug the coastline as much as we could and just try and get some decent park ups. Um, we thoroughly enjoyed doing that and we thoroughly enjoyed the Kelpies. Um, Which is good access for disabled people. Yeah, it is really good access. So anybody who's got any kind of mobility issues, the Kelpies has really good access and there's overnight park and they have 10 pound a night with toilets, there's also a coffee shop and everything there open during the day. Nice walks. Um, there's, yeah, there's really nice if you've got, like I say, if you've got full mobility and you go for a walk, there's plenty to walk around the canal and around um, different uh, waterfowl areas that they've got set up, little lakes and things. Um, if you have got mobility issues and you're in either a wheelchair or a scooter, all of that's accessible, so really good for that. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this trip. Um, as usual, all of the good stuff. Um, if you like, subscribe, hear us with any comments, any questions, um, share your experiences with us as well. Really look forward to it. So we'll catch you in the next one. Yeah. Bye for now.